Am I melting already? Music. Oh, not your music. Go away, 101.1 Strauss. to 1. Strauss! Johan! You're listening to Johan Strauss on Dallas's number one classical station. <laughs> 101.1 <laughs> The One The One Tonight at the Lizard Lounge Oh my god Bach <laughs> Bach <laughs> What's up, guys? Today, we're driving the most exciting, the hottest car that's ever driven these streets. It's a Honda Ridgeline. The 2019 <laughs> Honda Ridgeline. It's a truck. It's actually a truck. Yeah. It's not really a car. This thing is, uh... But you wouldn't know it if you were in the cabin like we are, and you, like if, if you were somehow teleported into the cabin and like you didn't see the outside, like they blindfolded you and like brought you in here. It does feel like a car. You'd probably think you're driving a car. I will say it doesn't have the same yeehaw vibe that a lot of the American trucks have. No, it doesn't. This very much is like a it's, utility it's, vehicle. It's very restrained and like toned down and calm, I yeah. think. It's similar in a way to the Toyota Corolla that we reviewed, mm -hmm. that it's like appliance-y. I yeah. think more of like an appliance, I feel like, more than like, this car is awesome, man. Yeah, not so much an extension of your personality versus yeah. I need to lift some things sometimes and carry them places, and I don't want an American truck and you also, that's reliable. And you also want a good daily driver. This is like yeah. the daily driver truck. Yeah. This is the fastest vehicle we've ever reviewed. I don't think that's accurate. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. What was that? Um, I wasn't even counting. No. I wasn't either. It felt like 10... I was going to say 9, 8, 9 seconds. Seconds. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, not, not a, it's not a fast car. It's, it's not a fast truck. Oh, you're right. See, there you go. It's, it feels like a car. Is that a good thing? It depends. Depends. If you're a boring person who enjoys boring things, Oof. this is probably a ideal vehicle for you. Yeah. And that is not too, And that's not hating. Not, no, it's just... It's just, it's just... That's how it be. That's just how this is. I think the best angle on this thing is probably from the front. I don't really know if there's any, like, defining characteristic of this, the though. The only thing is, like, the headlights are slightly angular and cooler than the rest of the car, but that's all I can think of. Maybe. The only defining thing is, like, the big Honda logo on the front. Yeah, it's huge. Which is pretty big. But like, meh, meh, meh. yeah. <laughs> Another thing that it differs from other trucks on is that the mirrors are really close to the side of the car. Yeah, like which on, is good for compact. Yeah, it's it's small. You won't worry about hitting anything. But a lot of times on bigger vehicles, the reason they have them out so far is so you can see your blind spots. But I I don't think this one really needs it. I mean, the visibility is yeah. great. Visibility is good. This is like maybe the best visibility I've ever had in a truck. I don't really notice any severe blind spots. No, I mean, these pillars are a little bit big, but I mean, that's what you get with a bigger truck. Yeah, I guess that's taking us straight into the interior of this because yeah. uh, the exterior, I mean, let's face it, you don't buy this because it has a cool looking exterior. Nah. The interior also is uh, <clears throat> quite plain. Yeah, um, I'd say so. This I mean, this gets the job done. It's very, I will say it's very practical, which we'll get to. Very practical, but very plain. And I mean, yeah. that's like Honda's IO is yeah. plain and practical, but will work and will work well and will last forever. Uh, and you won't really have to do much maintenance ever on something like this, I presume. It's MO. Sure. Modus operandi. MO, okay. I don't know why I said IO. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lots of hard plastic, but there is some soft touch stuff. Like the top of the dash is softer. Um, the, the window sills are softer, the armrest is the softest of all. But you do have a red engine start. Hey, that's fancy. That's cool. The, yeah, the thing about this car is there's nothing really fancy about it. Like, nah. it's crazy that the red engine start stop is the, the flashiest thing in here. Well, I think the gauge cluster is pretty flashy. It has, like, green lights, which is cool. It has green lights. Yeah, it's got something. It's, it's got some lights and some swoops going on. It has, you have, like, a digital blocky display it's that looks like real a, chunky it looks like you have like, it's like a ti calculator yeah right in the front yeah that is what it looks like let's talk about the seats in the back because uh when we got this the guy had them folded up and if, when you look in it doesn't really even look like you've got seats in the back because they're 
the way they're supported is not like a big chunky seat like the ones in the front. It's yeah. got a little metal bar, like a bracket that folds down to, to support the front of the seat back there. And so when you fold them up, you've got a ton of space back there, which is cool. Um, but on the other hand, it does look a little cheap and I could see that breaking and then you having a wobbly seat back there. Yeah, I can see that as happening, but it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a cheap truck. It starts at 29,990 okay. for the base model. It goes all the way up to like 42,000. I think the one we were testing is like 40,000. Okay, so that's pretty competitive with um, like the Toyota Tacoma. Yeah. It's pretty competitive with other midsize trucks. Probably the Ford Ranger. Yeah. Um, it's it's competitive with all of those Even midsize pickups. Even like the F-150s, are, you can get base yeah. models that are pretty cheap. Yeah. So yeah, this is, this is competitive with most of the other trucks in the segment. Um, let's talk about storage. You got this. You got a lot of it. This thing. You can fit a whole cheeseburger. You got, oh, you could fit like, I don't even know, 30 maybe? 30 junior cheeseburgers in there? We've I got, think, uh, got one in there currently. How many cheeseburgers can fit in the glove box? Uh, mm, maybe. Five. No, that's probably 12. That's a 12. 12. If, you, if you lay them flat like that. That's a 12 that's cheeseburger. A, that's a 12 burger glove box a right there. 12 burger glove box. Now, these are junior cheeseburgers, mind you, not the full size. So oh, man. Take that into consideration. Salesman, this bad boy could fit so, so many, many junior cheeseburgers, cheeseburgers in it. <laughs> you know how many can fit in the bed? How many? So, we're going to find out the volume of the bed of this truck, and then we're going to, to measure this burger, and we're going to determine how many of them we can fit in the bed of the truck. Stay tuned. So let's line it up with the edge there. So we got three inches uh, length here. I assume it's about the same here. Let's get the, we gotta get the height too. Just over an inch high. So we'll say one. One inch tall about. Now we need the volume of the bed of the truck. So we have 210 inches long by 79 inches wide. It's been a long time since right. I've done math. You have three inches long, I. Yeah. It's 210 inches long. Yeah. How many times does three go into 210? Uh, use your phone, I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's 70. 70. Three goes into 21 seven times. Look at the brains on hey, your Hey, hey. So you can fit 70 cheeseburgers across. Is it? Or no, long, it must be long, long ways. You can okay. fit 70 cheeseburgers from top to bottom. Okay, we'll say that's height. Okay. That's width and that's depth. Yes. Okay. So that's 70 cheeseburgers long. Okay. Then the width. Okay. 79 divided by three. Divided by, whoops, that's not uh, 79 divided. Oh my God. You can fit 26 cheeseburgers across. 26 across. You can fit 23 cheeseburgers high. Now that just gives us the axes. So there, there, and there. We need to fill in the rest. So all we need to do is we multiply 70 burgers by 26 burgers by 23 burgers, and that's how many burgers. Because all we did is we just converted inches to burgers. I guess you're right, we did convert. Okay, yeah, do that. And I said I'd never use math outside of school. This doesn't sound accurate. Okay, what you got? <laughs> it says you can fit 41,860 cheeseburgers. <laughs> 41,860 cheeseburgers in there. I mean, <laughs> Maybe. I, I science if I've ever seen it. Back to the show. You got a bunch of room in the bed of the truck for not cheeseburgers. I mean, you could easily take this thing to but Ikea. What else would you use other than other for cheeseburgers? Cheese, not much, really. Maybe like <laughs> sand or water. Bricks. Yeah. <laughs> All the material in Settlers of Catan. Exactly. Yeah, some, <laughs> some sheep. It is actually pretty practical. However, my favorite thing about the bed is this. Oh, yes. music in the bed of your truck. You that can is, play music in the bed of the truck. It's so dope. I love that. It's, it's for tailgating. But also if you want to like have some friends like in the bed, yeah. you, they can like jam out to the tunes with you like while you're driving around. Except That's cool. for you, you would have to open this little dividey window back here for you to hear it because you can't listen to music in the cabin and in the bed at the same time. We don't know where the speaker is in the bed of the truck, but it's there and it's pretty loud. So, I mean, if you just wanted to annoy people, like if you're stuck in traffic, you want to blast a podcast or something full volume. Blast a podcast. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five cubbies per door. 
It's pretty good. Good cubby space. Good cubby space. In the back, you also have cup holders in the door uh, and in the center thing. You also have a space in the truck bed where like you put the key in and like you oh, unlock yeah, the it super secret compartment. you open it up and there's a secret compartment in there where you can store like i don't know like half a body maybe probably half a body like, or like if you chopped uh, it in half and like really pressed it down you could probably get yeah, a full body in there. yeah you might be able to get one in and then there's no like escape latch as far as no I can you, yeah there's no way getting out of as there as far so as i can tell either ideal kidnapping vehicle because if someone <laughs> looks in the bed of the truck there's nobody there but Little they know. There's a little, little secret. They know. Little they know. There's a secret compartment. This does have a V6. Yeah, it's a 3.5 liter V6 with 280 horsepower. And how much can this thing tow? 3,500 to 5,000 pounds, depending on the spec. That's like Jeep Wrangler territory. Yeah. So not the greatest towing truck. If you if all you care about is towing, get a bigger truck or like a diesel or something. Yeah. This, this is, is not a good, this isn't like a hauling work truck. No. But if you just want a truck for a truck that you occasionally use to carry stuff around, I feel like this is probably one of the better options. I'd say so. It's very comfortable, very mild. 19 MPG in the city mm -hmm. and 26 on the highway. So not like super great numbers, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's, not it's terrible. a truck. It's, it's a not truck. terrible. It's a truck. You'd expect it. Yeah. It's not like totally horrible. I was only surprised because I'm thinking of this as a car. Like I'm right. thinking, I'm expecting car fuel economy like 23, 30 or something like but that. But it, it is still a truck. It's like still a it, truck. It, it feels like a car on the inside and it drives almost, it drives more like a car, I think, than a truck. Yeah, absolutely. But it is At still a truck. Day. At the end of the day, it's still a truck. Is that? I think that's my parents. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Hi, hi, hi mom, hi dad. You can't adjust any performance settings. There aren't any. Uh, you have no paddles. You have no sport mode. You have all you have is uh, low. If you want to put it in low gear, uh, you've got a button here for rough terrain that you can turn on, which is kind of handy. You do have this gigantic sunroof. That is nice. That's a nice touch. Which is cool. I'm not gonna. Oh, well, okay. Or I guess we are it. gonna open it. It's gonna get hot. Oh, oh I'm gonna close it. I don't want it to be hot. hot. Bright. All in all, I think this is a great truck for a certain kind of person that's not us. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> this is a great truck for a person with like kids or a family who like, you might need a truck for the practicality reasons that this brings. Yeah. Um, where like you can haul stuff in the bed and you can like tow some things and you can hold things around, but it drives really easy and like casually like a it, car. It's very it's comfortable. Like, it's like a car that's yeah. more willing to roll when you go around the corner. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's, it's doesn't feel like it's at huge risk of rolling. This feels more planted than a Jeep to me. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It does feel more planted than a Jeep. It's very, it's very relaxed, very casual. It shifts at like 2,000 RPM, so the engine is never struggling unless you really stomp on it. It doesn't take any extra effort to drive. Like if you've never driven a truck before, this is the easiest possible one to get in and drive around, mm -hmm. I would say. And I don't, I, the practicality thing is an interesting issue for me with this because I feel like, um, there are trucks that are arguably more practical. Oh, they, sure. can, they can tow more and they can carry more, but they're bigger than this. Yeah. And this is smaller. So if you live in like a denser area, maybe like San Francisco or something, where like everything is really, really dense. You don't want and a giant truck. Yeah, you don't really want a giant truck. And this would be like an ideal workaround. Yeah. If I was in the market for a truck, which I'm not, but yeah. if I was, I would probably go with the Tacoma over this because I think Tacomas are cooler. Yeah. Um, well, if I'm buying a truck, I don't care how cool it is. Ah, it's a truck. I think Tacomas look cooler, and so I'd probably go with the Tacoma, or I'd go with the Raptor, but that's only oh, if yeah. I wanted like, something ridiculous. The Raptor is fast. The Raptor is fast. I, I'm waiting for the Rivian and Tesla's pickup. We'll see how those work. Yeah, that'll stiffen up the competition a bit. For sure. But you know what this does have? What does it that have? That is cool. <gasps> Foldable armrest. Foldable armrest. That's actually cool. I was looking for that. Yeah. Air horns, please. This is great. What well, also makes you hear this? It sounds like a duck. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what? It literally sounds like a duck. Now how do you? Why how does do, it do that? Why does it stop sometimes and not other times? Hey. No, it does it every time. No, I mean it's it stopped in place like halfway up one of these times. It always does that. Look, you can move it. No, I mean it like locked and I couldn't push it down. Oh. That's what that weird. is? Whack. Whack. That's right. Or quack. Quack. 
All right, starting us off first is uh, performance. So uh, not not great. Not zero great. to sixty slow. Zero to sixty eventually. Don't, don't even yeah. Zero to sixty happens. It, it happens. It happens. I promise. Handling. I mean, good. It's truckish. It's you it's, got a little. You got a few degrees either way before it starts to move. So it's comfortable. It's not going to be all jerky. But two. Yeah, I was. <laughs> man, I don't know if about two. It drives in a straight line. Well, all right, all right. I'm gonna all give right. it a three. Uh, um, you, you just, you I'm, stick with with, I'm, stick, I'm sticking with the two. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not pretty rough. good. It's, but performance. It's a truck. You, there are performance trucks. So we can measure it against that. This is nowhere close to that. It's nowhere close to like a Raptor, no, for example. Not even close. This is a utility like, truck. Yeah, definitely. It's just a straight utility truck. Practicality, where it shines. Very good. Yeah. It's actually quite good. It's like really easy to use. It's really comfortable. Lots of storage. Lots of storage. Lots of space in the back, and you have the nice bed. The only thing I would knock the practicality for, I would knock it on two things. One, the towing capacity yeah. is not super high. I mean, it's decent. Yeah. It's probably enough if you're getting this. If you need something more, get something bigger. Yeah. Um, and uh, fuel economy. Fuel economy's not great. Which is not great either. So I'd give it probably a, I think I'm going to give it an eight and a half. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it an eight. Um, I'd like to see, it's got one 115 volt AC outlet in the back. I'd like to see more of that, maybe in the cabin itself. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to see higher towing capacity because it is a truck. Yeah. But other than that, I think it's fantastic. It's great. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, and then that brings us up to value, which I mean, pretty Solid. decent. It's yeah. it's only thirty thousand dollars. And that's probably what base I'd go price. for. Honestly, I might go for the base. Yeah. Because uh, the additional money doesn't really get you additional features that are you have to have. I mean, upgraded systems and stuff like this, the infotainment. It'll last you a long time. These things are like pretty bulletproof. I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. Seven and a half. Yeah. I think it's a really good value. I think I will go with a seven. Yeah. I, I do consider it a good value. Yeah. Uh, then that comes up to cool factor, which is like non-existent. Uh, almost non-existent. Yeah. I mean, one, one. Yeah. Oof. Well, if we're counting like a two thousand I mean, Ford Taurus, I'll give this a two. A two. Yeah. Okay. Because there are uglier, dumber even more boring cars. I was going to say, I think I'm going to give it a two yeah. also. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's nothing At least it looks modern. At least it looks modern. Yeah. There's nothing cool about this, no. but like, there are cars that are more lame. I would totally agree. And yeah. so that's why I'd go with the two. Yeah, you're right. Quality. Pretty eh, passable. For, passable. For the price, yeah. it's, it's good. Like, it's acceptable for $30,000, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's nicer than some cars at that price point. Yeah. Not a ton, but some. I'm going to give it a five and a half. Five and a half. I'm going to give it a little higher because I think long-term reliability is very high on these. That's true. I always forget about reliability. I'm going to give it a six, then. A six. All right. I'm going to give it a little bit more. I'm going up to a 6.5, specifically because of long-term reliability. Yeah. Fun factor, which is also quite low. Yeah. Um, if it was pleasant factor or mild factor, or maybe we should include like a luxury, like yeah, I like mean, fun can factor. also be. Some cars are designed to be fun, some are not. This one's designed to be reliable and safe and useful. Yeah, um, that's what you get this for. Yeah. You get this for reliability, safety, and usefulness. Yeah, you don't get it for anything else. You don't yeah. get it for fun. And our list is biased it against is biased. fun towards fun cars. Yeah, for sure. And that negatively affects us. So fun factor, two. Yeah. For me, it's a two. It's like it's not fun. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't hate driving this. It's pleasant. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a two as well. Two, two. Twenty-eight point two five. Ouch. For the average score, which is like not great, not but. Great. Mostly negatively impacted by uh, low, very low scores in fun factor, cool factor, and performance. Yeah. So take the numbers with a grain of salt. Take what we're saying about the car while we do the review as gospel because we're never wrong. Um, so if you need a practical vehicle, this is a good one. This can fit so many cheeseburgers so in it. So many cheeseburgers. Did you see how many cheeseburgers we put in the bed? I mean, come on. If that doesn't sell it, I don't know what will. Anyway, if this is your first time watching, thank you. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We have other stuff, if trucks aren't your cup of tea. Uh, Ferraris. Yeah, we got Ferraris, we got Lamborghinis. Lamborghinis. Right. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next episode, and we will see you then. Bye.
Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service for people who actually like to learn stuff. They have thousands of documentaries and nonfiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers. If you like our show, you'll love their speed category. It's got a ton of content on cars and other things that go fast. We've recently partnered with Curiosity Stream to help build Nebula, our new streaming service. Nebula is a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and nonfiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Grand Test Auto fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com GTA. When you sign up for CuriosityStream, you get instant access to thousands of nonfiction titles, and you'll get to watch a bunch of new episodes from Grand Test Auto months before they hit YouTube, plus lots of other great Nebula originals. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not only GTA, but the entire educational community, as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. We promise you'll love it.